So Andrew, remind me what that premise is. Is there just one premise that's crucial there, or are there oh, many? No. Uh, yeah, there, there are a few actually. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, so from the causal principle, right, uh, which uh, shows that uh, everything that begins to exist has a cause, right? From that ca ca causal principle, uh, which is based on those three reasons which I offered, um, it, one, one can. Uh, uh, and the reasons why I offered those is because, as I said, right, there's our, our universe. Um, I mean, okay, so I, I've given those reasons. So, so based on the, the causal principle, what, what this implies is that the first cause uh, has um, no beginning, right? And so, uh, and also, and so this implies that the first cause uh, is not a, an event because an event is something that has a beginning, right? So, uh, the first cause is not a change, right? So, it mean, what it means is that the first cause must be initially changeless, right? Uh, and so, an initially changeless first cause for the initially changeless first cause. Uh, to change and bring about an event, the initially changeless first cause must have, uh, firstly, the capacity to bring about an event in a way that is not prior, uh, that is not determined by prior events, right? And it must also have the capacity to prevent itself from changing initially, right? So that um, you know, it, it is not a so so that you know, it, it is uh, it can be initially changeless and beginningless, right? Uh, and this, these two properties implies that the first cause has libertarian freedom, right? It must be able to freely bring about uh, the first event. And anything that has libertarian freedom is a personal agent, and therefore the first cause is a personal agent. Yeah. So let's start there. Graham, where, where do you disagree uh, on that? So, assume, like, let's assume the stuff that's necessary to get to this premise. Yeah, so, so that's sort of tricky because I think that if you were going to accept that what begins, whatever begins has a cause, you'd go for infinite regress. And so we would have to go back and talk about that. Um, now, that, that seems to me no, the way. No, that, 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 that's, that's not true, way. actually. I mean, if everything begins to exist has a cause, then there's no, uh, no the, 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 the series can stop with a beginningless first cause, right? There's no infinite regress. You can stop with a beginningless first cause. Right, but and I'm the thinking first cause. Will be an exception to the no, cause of I think that, I'm thinking life. about from my point of view, if you're if you're not a believer, right, at this point, it seems to me my way more plausible that what you're gonna think is, okay, whatever begins has whatever begins to exist has a cause, then we've got we will go with infinite regress. And so there's a whole argument that we haven't had about infinite regress that would now become relevant. But let's put that to one side. Okay. So um Think about the the initial state, and think about the um, the the um, I don't know. Let, 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 there's the universe, and let's think about the universe as expanding. Right. Uh, does the at t equals zero does the event of the universe is expanding that's happening at t equals zero have a beginning. Um, well, uh, I, well, no, if because the it. whole extent of the event is an instant, right? If it has a beginning, then at t equals zero, we've got to somehow either divide it into the beginning, the middle and the end or something like that. And that just seems false, right? The thing the event that's happening, the instantaneous event that's happening at t equals zero doesn't have a beginning, right? So I really didn't follow that part of the argument. Maybe you want to say it again. Okay, sure. So uh, I already explained earlier on, right? What I mean by a beginning is something that is finite in the earlier than direction, right? So it doesn't depend on the beginning point, right? There's no need for a beginning point on my definition of beginning, right? So um, even if there's no beginning point, as long as the universe uh, is finite in the earlier than direction, it will have a beginning on my view, right? And it will be susceptible to the causal principle, right? Because if that thing which is finite in extension has a beginning, then uh, as I said, no, there can be no properties that that can do the work of differentiating that right, from other metaphysically possible states of affairs, right? From beginning to exist uncaused, right? So that is my argument. So I'm still not getting it, right? So. I'm, I'm imagining that there's an initial state of the universe at t equals zero, right? 
and I'm thinking that there's an event, the event that's happening just at t equals zero, and you're saying that event has to have a beginning, right? And I can't see that. That event just occurs wholly at t equals zero. I don't see where the beginning of that event, the distinction between the beginning of the event and the entire event, I don't see how that there's any such distinction to be made. Uh, right. very Sorry. Um, so, so can you can you go back and repeat again the argument, not the not the explanation, but the actual argument itself that was supposed to get you to the conclusion that um, uh, the initial cause is free? And let me stop you at the point where you've said the thing that I'm trying to respond to. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed what you said earlier on because uh, my, my network was disrupted. So, uh, but let me just repeat uh, what I said earlier on and you can stop me uh, wherever you, you think is necessary, okay? So, um, so my, my reason for why uh, the first cause is personal is because um, the, the first cause, a beginningless first cause cannot be an event because an event is something that has a beginning, right? And so the first the first cause cannot be an event. The first cause cannot be a change, right? Because uh, a change has a beginning. And so the first cause must be initially changeless. And so for the initially changeless first cause to cause an event, right? It has to have the property to initiate the event by itself, right? It, it, cannot, be, it cannot be dependent on a previous cause to do that. And secondly, it must also have the property uh, of being able to prevent itself from changing initially, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't be initially changeless and beginningless. And therefore having these two properties imply that the first cause is uh, is a free, uh, has libertarian freedom. It's a free agent. Right. Okay, so I don't get the distinction here between objects and events. Uh, so on my view, events and objects are alike in their status with respect to beginnings, right? Objects have beginnings of their existence. Events have beginnings of their obtaining, assuming in both cases that they're not instantaneous. So maybe we should just forget about um, instantaneous um, events and objects. Right? We, at the beginning, we remember we thought, well, there's, there's different causal series here. There's a series of events. There's a series of objects. I don't see what the ground of the distinction is that would make you say that somehow or other events have to have beginnings, but objects don't. Right? Okay. It seems to me so, that it seems to me that we've got two categories here, and with respect to beginnings, they're kind of equally placed, whether they have to have them or not. Yeah, so um, I, I think to answer your question, we have to be clear about the, the what, what, do we, what do we mean by events, right? What's the definition of an event, right? So as I said earlier on, on my view, an event is equivalent to a change, right? So what is a change? A change is um, involves the gaining or the losing of properties, right? Something or some or, or part of the thing gaining or losing a property. And so um, at the state of gain a property or lose a property, though, that state right, will be a, 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 you know, a, a beginning, right? As something gained a property, it, had, it, began, it began to have a new property. So, and therefore, on this definition, events have beginning, right? Uh, whereas an object does not necessarily have beginnings because that could be, a, 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 say, an initially changeless object, right? An object that is initially changeless will not have a beginning. It has, yeah, so, so that, that's the distinction. So can there be an event where a thing just maintains its properties? So it doesn't gain properties and it doesn't lose properties, but it just stays the well, same. Well, uh, if what you have described is what I would call changeless, right? It, it, it maintains, right? So it is changeless. So it's not but a change. Is, it, it, but sorry, but is it an event, right? So. Is there an event that's occurring? I would say that it's a state, right? What is wait, so so? It's not an event. It's a state. It's a changeless state. It's not an event. Okay, so states. I mean, in the in the in the 
uh, the kind of distinctions that we we started with, we didn't mention states. We just talked about things and events. So uh, if let, let's add states into the ontology and think about um, the the states of things. Does the persistence of the state of an object require a cause on your view? The state of persistence? Um, well, uh, so, 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 so it, can, it, it, can, can it, it be that there's no explanation, right? So let's put it this way. Can it be that a thing um, so we're thinking now, I'm thinking now about things in time, I'm thinking about things in the, the universe. Can it be that a thing maintains its properties over a period of time and there's no explanation of why it does so? And secondly, can it be that a thing maintains its properties over time and there's no cause for its maintaining its properties over time? Well, um, if something persists, um, through time, right, then it, it will have changing relations, right, with time, right? So, um, yeah, so I, I, I don't think, uh, you know, something can just persist changelessly through time, right? I think something can be ch changeless without time, right? Um, as in the initial state of, of God, as I explained just now, right? Uh, but I don't think something can persist through time, given that it will have changeless, uh, ch changing relations, right, as, as time progresses. Um, as to whether something, um, yeah. So. Hmm. Hmm. so it's quite common for people to distinguish between real change and Cambridge change. And okay. for people yeah. to think that if that, that merely persisting through time is just Cambridge change, it's not real change, right? And likewise, changes in your location relative to the location of other things because they're moving. Right, that's mm -hmm. just a Cambridge change. It's not a real change. So, yeah, I understand the distinction. Yeah, so um, between Cambridge change and real change. Yeah, so uh, yeah, but if you if you understand a Cambridge change as as a change uh, it, as a as a you know, as, as something that that uh, as, as is different, right? At uh, every temporal locations, it is it has different properties. For example, right, uh, with with being related to other things. Um, so. You can if you can define change that way, then uh, Cambridge change will be a real change. So I think, I think it depends on the definition of change, actually. No, but, but you can't, you shouldn't do that because Cambridge change was meant to be distinguished from real change. So yeah, I understand not. the distinction. So yeah, now the definition yeah. obliterates the it's the distinction that we're trying to draw. Um, I'm, I'm trying to say that no, there is still some common properties right between Cambrian, Cambridge change and non-Cambridge change, right? That I mean that's that's the reason why you know they, they, they are both called changes, right? So that there's some something in there is still something in common, even though there are differences right between these two, but there's still something in common that we can class classify them under change. It depends on how we define change. Yeah. Hmm. But I mean I think this is just definition a uh, defi definitional disagreement, but I don't think this is there's anything substantial in that do you think? Uh, so you might think that for there to be, that an event requires real change and that real change um, means that there's got to be changes, um, well, if you've got a single thing, that there's got to be a change in its properties that's not just a change that's really happening elsewhere that's kind of relational with respect to it. I'm not sure whether this is going to help or whether this is going to help with the, the question about the premise in the argument for free will, though. I'm worried that, um, that we might need to say some more, though, about um, states and events in order to assess that premise. That's that's the kind of direction that this line of questioning is going in. Yeah. So, um, so you, you said that we may need to say a bit more, right? So, what I would say a bit more is that um, there, 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 there is um, a, a gaining of properties, right, uh, with 
something happening, right? So a, a series of events, as I said, right? Uh, given my argument, a series an infinite regress is not possible. So the series of events must have a first cause. And so the first cause must be in some way that is causally related, right, to the series of events. It must in, be in some way uh, bring, bring a, brought about, right, the, the, the events. So as the, the event was, is, so as, as there is a property that is being gained, right, that will be, um, that, that will be how the, 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 the series uh, is, is brought about, right? So that, that is what I mean, right? When I say that the first cause brought about a series of events, there is, the, the, there is a gain of uh, property, right? Um, and when that happens, that there is a beginning as well. Okay, so let's, can, can we go back one more time to the argument from free will and the first premise? In that argument. So I'll just get you to repeat it again. I'm sorry, I haven't written it down. So. Or maybe I should share the screen, right? So if it, if, if it helps, right? So that uh, people can follow yeah. and, and Graham can follow easier uh, as well. It might. So, um, yeah, whenever you've you got it shared, just let me know. Yeah, I, I uh, so Graham wants me to show the Actually, I have sent the slides to you, Graham. Before uh, I mean, the the the, the inference for personal first cause, right? Is, yeah, I, but I, um, I don't have yeah. it on. Have it on. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So let me sh let me share the screen. Right. Uh, can you see it? Right. In order yeah, to cause an it. event, yeah, from initially change state, the first cause must have the capacity to be origin of first event in a way that is undetermined by prior events, and the capacity to prevent itself from changing. For otherwise, the first cause will not have been initially changeless and existing beginningless without the first change. Be the originator of the event in a way that is undetermined by prior events, the capacity to prevent itself from changing, the capacity to prevent itself from changing, for otherwise the first cause would not have been initially changeless and existing beginninglessly without that without the event or change. Okay. Um, Okay, so from an initial changeless state. So there is actually mention about states in the argument. So we've got events, we've got states, and we've got and we've got objects. Um, I what what I think at this point is I want to go back to thinking about uh, the changelessness that you're appealing to and the, and the characterization of that but my feeling is that we've probably gone long enough um, and we should defer it for another time yeah um so yeah um so you, you said you want to ask me about the initial changes state is that right uh yeah yeah so i, I have already explained so, yeah um, so 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 we're thinking about um and initially when i was thinking about um causal reality we were thinking just about things in advance but now it looks as though we want to have states in the picture as well. And so I think you want to, I mean, we, we had a story where events were changes in the properties of things and states are going to be something like distributions of properties over things, something like that. So, so we have things. So, so we have things. We have their properties, and we have changes in the properties of things. And that's they, they're the kind of basic elements in the characterization of reality. Uh, it seems kind of late in the day is what I'm thinking to start worrying about 
how states fit into this picture. But it's important that in um, that slide that you put up, we have an introduction of states and we hadn't previously been talking about states. We've been talking about things and we've been talking about events. Right. So, yeah, so, the, um, I'm yeah. Thinking, so I'm thinking that there's some more theory that we need, but we don't have it yet. And it's probably very late to try um, to erect it. At Speaking point, you know, of discussion. late, it is getting late where I am. It's uh, yeah. it's almost 1030 at night and I is is way past my bedtime. <laughs> so I think oh. it might be time. It might be time to start drawing this to a close. So why don't we do this? Uh, since Andrew went first, we'll let him uh, go first again, and then Graham can have the final word, but just kind of give some summary thoughts, maybe take three to five minutes, share your thoughts of the discussion, and then we'll close it out. All right, thanks so much, Cameron. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this discussion with Graham. Um, I'm, I'm grateful you know, uh, for, for this interaction. And I'm also uh, glad to discover that uh, you know we have uh, quite a number of agreements, right? Uh, so we, we agree, you know, that uh, a, a loop, right, is not the case, right? We agree that infinite regress is not the case, right? Uh, and so um, um, the only the, the and um, concerning the the, the 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 first cause having free will, you know, Graham asked me to clarify what do I mean by states. Uh, uh, and my, my, my clarification is that a, a state is something that can be beginningless, right? Uh, a, a state is something that can be changed. Can, a state is something that can be initially changeless, right? Whereas an event is a change, right? So that, that would be the, 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 the difference, right? Um, and, and so uh, I think the main, so, so, so that's a clarification, right? So not, I think the main point of this agreement is the causal principle, right? So we spent a lot of time debating about that, right? So at this time, I, I just share the screen. I hope you all can see it, right? I, I share the screen where, I, once again, I lay out the premises of the modus tollens argument, which I presented earlier on, right? Um, and I think the key point of this agreement is that uh, Graham claims that so the initial state uh, is special, uh, you know, is, is, is necessarily existing, right? And, and so it has some special property. Um, but I, I was trying to explain, right, that, uh, um, that there can be no such special property that can do the work because the properties of this space-time block and the properties of those other space-time blocks or other things which differentiate between them will be had by them only when they have already existed, right? And so I'm trying to explain that you know, um, there can be no such special property which can do the, the, the work that is necessary for his metaphysical theory, right? Um, so so that, that, that is my key response, right? And so, um, so I think this is um, the main point of disagreement, right? So, uh, uh, if if we uh, if the first premise is true, right, and uh, if the other if if, if this, the cost principle is true and the other premises are true, then the conclusion follows necessarily, right, that that, 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 that exists a creator of of the universe, right, because uh, if the premises are true, the deduction is valid, then the conclusion must be true, right, and so um, yeah, so that that that, that is where um, yeah, so uh, I I hope that uh, Graham and I you know we can have uh, further. Up, opportunities right to to interact and discuss this uh in the future right um so uh, that's all i'm going to say for this time and uh, once again i want to thank graham for this discussion thank you thanks andrew all right we'll turn to to graham okay so um the last thing that andrew said um is in one way right. I mean, given his assumptions, it follows that there's um, a first cause that's not part of the universe. Uh, although I didn't make a fuss about this, it's equally the case that from my assumptions, it follows that there's a first cause that's part of the universe. And the way that I see the discussion having gone, uh, we've made kind of no progress in uh, changing the views that we had about the various premises in the arguments on, on each side that would have led to the conclusion or sort of better, made no progress in bringing about changes in the viewpoints that we had before we came to the 
discussion. Uh, I thought that that's how things would turn out before we started, and it seems to me that that's the case now that we've reached the end. Um, as Andrew said, there's always more to discuss, and there will be more to discuss on future occasions. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed the dialogue and I've been watching the live chat the entire night and people have been very, very engaged in the, the discussion, what you guys have, have talked about. I think I think we have made some progress, at least in the sense of like, it seems that we did find some key areas of disagreement and I think that's progress. You know, it may not have led to a complete acceptance of any arguments, complete arguments, but I think it was helpful to see where the, the key points of disagreements are. And yeah, I'm, I'm open to, you know, another round. If you guys want to see another uh, debate or discussion between Andrew and Graham, just let me know in the comments.